Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and we're starting this thing off early because why not? We're all here already, sitting here chatting in the chat, so we might as well just start it off. How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully all is well with everybody. I opened it up with the Trevor Burger Atlas. Amazing, amazing knife. And um, someone in the chat was talking about the LEXK. So the LE, L, <clears throat> excuse me, the LEXK, actually, when I reviewed it, because I did review that knife, the, the liner lock version, I think that's the LEXK. Anyways, I was calling it because I didn't know, right? I didn't know any better. I think at first I was calling it like the Lexic or something like that. <laughs> and then the owner, uh, you know, told me like it's the LEXK, like, you know, dot, you know, dots in between. And, um, you know, explained it all to me and, you know, I didn't know any better. So, uh, it was funny. Anyways, that knife though, he was saying in the chat that uh, it had a lighter detent. And I'll say this, the Trevor burgers have the best front flipping action of all knives. In my opinion, like I don't, obviously it's my opinion, right? But I've tried a lot of front flipping action and none of them have compared to Trevor Burger knives. Now I do, will agree the LEXK did have a lighter detent. Now, not saying that it was so light to the point to where like I thought it was bad because the, the front flipping action was on point, like on point. This one does have a bit stronger detent than that one. This is a frame lock version though. Uh, but still, though, same, like, sweet action as, you know, any Trevor Burger. Hey, Mom. My sweet mama. Uh, but one thing I do love about them is that you can easily reverse flick them. You know, just right off of the spine of the knife because the detent is so well tuned. Now, some people might say that that's light, but... For a front flipper, you kind of want them a little bit light. I mean, just a little bit because you'd hate to, for the, the jimping not to catch you. But anyways, um, but yeah, I love them Trevor Burger knives. Best front flippers. Everyone glad to see you here. Everyone saying hi to the mama. All right, so we're going to talk about this kitchen knife really quick because... So, if you guys didn't see it, I got this, uh, however you pronounce that, kitchen knife. I believe these are made by Best Tech. So, I did get this, and I'm going to make a cooking video with it. Now, I didn't know the steel, right? I didn't know the steel, just in case if you guys don't know. Let me pull it out. I'm sure you guys watched the unboxing, but I'll show it just in case really quick. Now, it had a sticker on it. I took it off because I've used it a little bit. But it's a very, very nice kitchen knife. It's got a nice mosaic pin. Very good fit and finish. Nice edge. Nice and thin. But supposedly it's uh, HRC at 62. And it's supposed to be really hard. And it said, like, on the sticker not to chop bones with it. So say, you know, because it's too hard for chopping bones, which is understandable. So I'm going to read this thing that somebody else. Hey, thank you, man. Can I get a shout out to both of, both of these nuts? Shout out to both of these nuts. <laughs> you got that shout out. There you go. Not just one of them, but both of them. Um, so, uh. Where was I? Um, so the um the steel. So somebody, I guess, contacted uh Best Tech or contacted them and asked them about the steel. So I'm gonna read you guys what they said about the steel because I, you know, I never heard of the steel. So first I'm gonna read what one person said. Hopefully they don't mind me reading their message to me because it was on um it was in the video, so you guys could just read it yourself. But anyways, um, I'm gonna read two different messages about the steel. So, and then I want to speak about it. So 304 CU, for those who don't want to look it up, is a 304 CU stainless steel or 1.4567. It is an austenic, or wait, an austenic, or whatever. Aust I don't know how to pronounce that. Austen, 
Nitic, Austinitic, Chromium, Nickel Stainless Steel Containing Copper. Except for the additional copper content, it generally has the same properties as stainless steel 304. The additional of the or the addition of the copper makes the material more ductile, while making it ideal for cold heating. Lower work hardening levels allow for further machining to take place. I understand it is usually for wrought items and pipes, easy to work, very brittle when hardened. This has 3% copper and 17% chromium, as well as 8.5% nickel. The carbon is only 0.04, so you see why it's hard but chippy. This would be useful to cut hot things, as I doubt it transfers heat well. Downside is the edge will look like a cross-cut saw blade with the with the tip broken off in a month or so. You need a good bead or kitchen knife. Uh, and he said buy a Mercer. Anyway, so Niche Designs, if you guys don't know who that is, he um, designed a knife. He uh, chimed in and said, so in talking with them directly, this knife is actually a San Mai construction of some unknown powdered alloy that is cladded with 304 cu on both sides if you look at the edge you can see the line where the hardened powdered alloy forms the actual cutting edge the 304 cu is the non-hardenable steel as you mentioned still waiting for a response from them as to the actual chemical comp composition of the hardened powdered alloy used but they did say it doesn't have a specific or known name, so that doesn't seem great. The 62 HRC is a big claim. So, supposedly, it is somewhat of a sand mai where, I guess, you know, there's a certain steel on it that, you know, shouldn't be hardened high or something. And then, you know, the edge is going to be the hardened. Now, speaking about whether or not, like, because they say don't chop bones with it and stuff. Speaking about that, in all kitchens, right, let's just talk about kitchens and kitchen knives. You have several different knives, right? So your, say your, um, your vegetable chopper or vegetable knife, your fruit knife, your, um, excuse me, you know, that knife is going to be separate from your bone chopper, right? You're going to have a cleaver for bone chopping and chopping through, you know, um, the, the harder, denser stuff, then you're gonna have like your paring knife. Right. But this is, would be like your, your chef knife, your, your knife to, to cut up, like I said, your fruits, your vegetables, you know, your salads, your, your carrots, your, you know, just stuff like that. And then meats, you know, like if, it, if it's deboned, right. You know, after you have your meats, you know, cutting up your steaks for your fajitas or whatever the hell. Right. So it, it's going to be the knife that you want to keep sharp, right? It's not going to be your chopper. No, you're not going to want to ax with it or anything like that. But there's nothing wrong with that. In my opinion, that would be like your the knife that you, you do grab to... Let me see if I can see that. Sand. Oh, yeah, you can see the sand my edge. I never noticed it till now. But, yeah, you can see it, actually. Um, so that's going to be the the whatever the other steel is that they they used um and then the spine is going to be that other steel that's not hardened so the edge is going to be that really hard stuff we'll see if it's chippy right i'll ch i'll mess with it and you know see if we can't uh chip the edge a little bit and if it is chippy it's chippy right then in that case which like i said i don't think that's going to matter so much like i said because if you're using it on a cutting board right so wood or that plastic type of cutting board not ceramic right i i i think it's hilarious sometimes when i see somebody using their chef knife on a fucking ceramic plate or a, a, a ceramic countertop and it's like i don't care what steel or what you have you're destroying your edge your edge is destroyed now so it wouldn't matter in that case but if you're using the proper tools then having a good chef knife like that, that's very hard, that keeps a nice, fine, sharp edge for your where you want a sharp knife, then for the bones, you pull out your, your cleaver or your other knife that you has a little weight behind it, that is a little stronger steel, things like that. Um, just like, you know, like your bread knife. Your bread knife is going to be a serrated blade, right? It's not, you're not going to pull out. 
I mean, I don't know what you guys do, but you know, like for bread that's nice and soft, a serrated blade is what you want to use because the saw saws right through it. It's, uh, you know, even trying to do it with a sharp edge, you know, that it'll smash, you know, I'm talking about fresh bread. It smashes it. That's why you want to use a serrated blade. So, but you know, like saying the same thing, like, oh, that's serrated. It, you know, it's not going to be a good chef knife. No, it's like, well, there, there's a knife for everything, right? So specific knives for specific tasks. So I wouldn't write something off just because it's saying it's hard. Don't chop bones with it. Um, to me, that's irrelevant, right? Like that just means, okay, well, this is a specific type of knife that you're going to use. And just like you wouldn't use certain knives in your kitchen to chop bones either. But we'll see because I, you know, I haven't tested it. So we're going to find out, you know, I am going to do a cooking video um, and cook, whip up a, a fire ass meal with it and see how it does. And on the side, I will test it a little bit you know, on, you know, unconventional things and see how it works out. I mean, I most likely won't put that in the video, but I'll talk about it at the end because I don't want to make a bad video for the knife when, you know, like doing stuff that they told you not to do. And then in the end, I bitch about it because I did what they told me not to do. Right. Like That doesn't make much sense. So I'm going to use it like it's supposed to be used, make the video. And at the end, if I do notice any chipping or anything like that, I'll talk about it. Um, now talking about some other stuff. Uh, how many people we got? In? Oh, sure. Yeah. Pull this up. I'm sorry, guys. 38 people don't forget to drop a like if you guys like the content i'd appreciate it. gregory thank you man i got your back bro great work sharp videos awesome man thank you i appreciate that man thank you so much um speaking of that i actually have a you know a part coming for the work sharp uh the precision guided sharpener hopefully you guys see it because it should be here in a few days and uh, I think you guys are going to, I think you guys are going to like it. If you guys got the work sharp, uh, precision guided sharpener, you guys going to want to watch that video. It's not that clamp that I was talking about from Gridomatic, but it's something pretty badass though. It's kind of in the, it's in the same ballpark. Let's just say that same ballpark. What's up, Tyler? Who has the forged and fire kitchen knife? Come on. I know some of you hand it. Um, what, what, what the hell just happened? There we go. We got over 40 people, but not 40 likes. Did you guys see in my, I don't know if you guys seen it or not, on 4th of July, or actually on the 3rd, I posted that uh, USA Made Knives video. It's a USA Made Knife collection video, and I got like seven dislikes on it. It's like, what are you disliking? My collection? Or, or like it didn't make any sense. I didn't make any claims in there. I just showed knives. I literally, it was a fast video. Like, here's a knife, check it out. Here's a knife, check it out. But can't make everybody happy. I'm guessing like three of them probably don't like the USA. Two of them are, are jealous because I had a knife they didn't like, that they didn't like. And probably one of them disagreed with me on a knife I had, even though I might not have said anything about it. Like people will dislike, I don't care if they dislike it. It only helps the channel, but I think it's hilarious. Um, what was, what did he say? Uh, 24 likes and 41 people. That is not a good ratio. Smash that like button. Sorry. Once we get to some good content, I'll start smashing it. So let's get into it. So I was going to, I'm going to talk about best ways to buy two sun knives. We're going to get into that here in just a second. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me. We're also going to talk about prices on sharpening knives. Um, what was that? Jared for Galactic 2022. Yeah. Okay. Um, got one dislike. Ooh, we're doing our job. We're doing our job. Okay. So I might have a, if you guys don't know, the Kaiser October. Do you guys remember that knife? I got it over there in the cabinet. I should have pulled it out since I had a note of it, but I didn't. So the Kaiser October, I possibly have the titanium prototype on the way. That might be awesome. It is a prototype though, prototype though. So 
you know, I'm not going to judge it too much, but I do want to get my hands on the, you know, that knife. So that's awesome. Hopefully it's uh, still pretty good. I, you know, being a prototype, I, I won't judge it like that, but it, it'll still be cool to show off because that's going to be a good knife. In my opinion, I think the titanium version of the October going to be sweet, going to be sweet. Um, so let's talk about some S 30 V. So I was actually listening to Jared. Do you like the Kaiser October better than the mini sheepdog? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's a tough question, man. They're both great. They're both great. Um, you know, it's it's the size uh, difference. Like it, it's bigger. So I'll be honest. The the um the October is a little bit more comfortable, a little bit bigger, and because it, it's just that little bit, like. The, the mini sheepdog is a small knife. So that's why I can't wait till I get the large one here because that might be on the way too. Um, so that one, I would pick between both of them probably. Um, I don't have it yet, but probably the, the, oh man, I don't know, man. That's, it's just tough, man. They're, they're, they're different. Uh, I do. I'll say this. I like the, the spidey flicking action better on the sheepdog. So if that means something, the action's better on the sheepdog for spidey flicking, just because you're trying to flick a fuller with the October. You're not, uh, you, it's easy. Don't get me wrong. It's easy, but a hole is always going to be better than a fuller. Jared, can you believe lefty EDC didn't love your Shiro that much? He doesn't love the control drop. Like, what? When he said that, I immediately stopped watching because I couldn't. I've said it to him that uh, uh, sometimes when I'm watching his videos, I, I lose a piece of my soul. <laughs> and and I'm not talking shit. I love the guy to death. I'm going to be on his live tomorrow night. Um, but uh, sometimes, like, I'll be watching him. And hopefully he's in here. If he's in here, say something, man, so I can go easy on you. No, I'm just joking. But I'll, um, I'll watch him, like, go to flick a knife. And I'm thinking in my head, like, just flip it, right? Like, it's kind of like, like this right now. Like, this thing has amazing action, amazing action. But I can easily go. Oh, but it flips great, right? It flips great. I just have to mean to flip it and I can mean to fail it or mean to flip it. And this thing is so, such good action on these knives. Uh, these, the Kaiser Duke fire flipping action. It doesn't drop though. Like it's not uh, one of those drop shutty knives, but yeah, there's just, but yeah, there's sometimes though, I'm just thinking like, man. Like he he get he criticizes pretty hard. I thought I criticized pretty hard. Holy shit! But he is left-handed though, so I I understand that there there's a a problem there with him trying to use certain knives because the way he holds it, if it's a right-handed knife, that's tough, right? To be into knives that are seventy percent all right-handed, that sucks. But when it winds up being a knife that you know is just great, it's like, come on. And then, like, with the smooth dropping action, like the knives that are a controlled drop, right? The ones that are just like a controlled smooth drop. If you give it any influence, it's just going to slap shut, right? Like, the only time it's smooth and controlled is if you're just sitting there like this. But you give it any influence, it's just going to drop. But, yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um. But yeah, gotta love the guy. Gotta love the guy. One day we're gonna find, uh, or I'm gonna, because I almost have it like out right now for myself, like where I got, I want to find a knife that he actually likes. One that he's like, yeah, that's badass. I love this knife. Yada yada. Because there's been a couple of them that I've sent to him, and I've expected that because it was a great left-handed knife. Like. When I find a knife that's just like great left-handed, like I practiced with it, I made sure it was a good lefty, like that Tucson TS uh, 195, amazing left-handed action. And it, you can fidget with it in a million different ways. Like there's every way to deploy the damn knife and they all work great. They all work great. And he said it was soulless. And I could tell he never took it out. 
took it out until his video. Because he didn't even realize it was a damn integral until his video. <laughs> so that just tells me you never even took it out of the box until your video. Whatever. Because you sometimes you do need a second. Like that's why, like when I get a knife from somebody, I spend some time with it. Because I <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want to say negative things about a knife without spending some time with it because your opinions change you know, like over, like I can flip something and say, yeah, I don't really like it. Spend an hour with it. And then you're in love. You know, that happens. Hey, lad, man. Thank you. 20 bones. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. 20 big ones. That's awesome. Boom. Thank you, lad. It drives me nuts when weak flips. Wait. When we flips a knife and he says the D10 sucks, right? Flip it, all right? It's there's still a D10. So, yes, there's knives out there that have uh, a like, and I'm talking about expensive knives right now, like say um, the 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 um, the sharp by designs, you know, with the D10 nubs and stuff. Yes, there's going to be D10 out there that aren't conventional D10 that are so good that you don't even have to try. They fly. They kind of like this Oz. Like this thing, as soon as you break it, but it's two detent balls. So, and it's it's very expensive. When you start getting to conventional detents, you still have to mean to flip them because you're breaking a detent. What's breaking the detent is the pressure you're pushing. So you're overcoming the detent and the pressure that you're taking to overcome a detent, you can either do it very, barely where you just crack the detent or you can make it fly you know it just gets kind of on you and like this knife has a fantastic detent so but i understand knives with light detents but sometimes man i wonder like man how many like knives can you get with that light of a detent in a row i'm not saying it doesn't happen but there's knives like like that old dino he tried the old dino, I, which I already know, I know his had a light detent. You can clearly see it. It had an extremely light detent, like clearly. But the one I tried, the detent was like almost too strong. But it was really good. Don't get me wrong. Really good. I loved the action. But it was on the verge of like it being like, holy shit, this detent's way too strong. But that is the thing with Italian knives. The variables in between models, like you could have three of the same knife and they're all different so that, and that's what happened with his or it wasn't his but the one that somebody sent him hey i finally figured out how to spidey flick two days ago and now i can't stop and i learned on the way wait I, and i learned on the only spider call i have and it's a slish booby congratulations welcome no turning back now it's own because I mean, once you, I learned on a thumb stud and man, I was struggling at first. Like I was trying to do it on a thumb stud, like, mm, mm. <laughs> and finally I started getting it and then I got really good at it. And then I finally got a spite or a hole, right? I think it was a spider call. Yeah. I think it was a spider call for the first time. And the first time I got to actually do a real spidey flick. Not on a thumb stud. It felt so good. Oh, it felt so good. I love it. Okay, so thoughts on the Microtech SOCOM Elite Manual seems hard to open at first. Okay, so I got one right here. I might as well just grab it. So when you open it, so when I first tried it, right? So I had heard like a so much reputation on what's up, Richie B. Um, so I uh I had heard so much about the SOCOM Elite being like the best thumb stud action, right? First time I tried it, I thought it was great. However, like I remember thinking like in my head, I don't think I said it in the video that I don't know about the best thumb stud action. But then after I had it a while and I had my own and everything, I understood because it's a specific way you open it. So when you're used to conventional thumb studs you just you put your thumb right on the thumb stud and you just flip it right with 
the SOCOM, you just drag your thumb up to it. And once you get to it, you break it and you break the, the detent. But once you get used to doing it with the, the SOCOM, you realize how, I don't know how to explain it, but just how good it is. Because once you get to like right here, right, this knife from here to open, it kind of takes itself over. Like, even if I just hold it right here, like it just kind of snaps itself in. So when you flip it, you get to a certain point. Like I was trying to fail it right there. Like if you try to fail it, like it's so, it's kind of hard to fail it when you get good at it. Like right now, I'm like barely breaking the detent. You see how far it's going? I'm like literally just breaking the detent. So if I give it anything at all, this thing's snapping open with authority. So, but once you get used to it, just keep, just keep, keep it up with that knife and you'll see, like, I just think you're, you got to get used to it. Just like a lot of knives. That's another thing with knives. Sometimes you got to get used to that specific knife. So, and this is kind of a topic I want to talk about too here in a second. But so when you're going through a bunch of knives like let's say you're used to one knife right like let's say i'm used to this knife and this knife only this is the knife i've been carrying for three days right this is what i'm used to then i switch to this knife right and i go to flick it and the detent doesn't break like that one and i'm just like oh you know it's not that great right but it's like i'm just not used to this one yet i'm thinking about that one so sometimes you just gotta get used to that exact knife and learn how it likes to be flipped learn how it's detent likes to be, you know, um, broken, you know, learn that knife the way it needs to be. And that's why I said that I like when I take a knife to spend a little time with it to kind of get to know that knife and what it likes before I give my real opinion on it. I don't want, that's why I never say anything bad in my first impressions, because whatever I say that's bad, could change one hour later, right? Like just once I get used to it. So it's not, it's not good for me to give you guys an uneducated opinion on a knife that I just opened up. Like I haven't gotten used to yet, you know? Um, it, like, it's kind of like, like when I was talking about the Tucson TS 195, right? You could open that knife up and think the flipper tab sucks because you can't push button it. Because if you push button it, it'll come around and hit you because it's got a front flip around it too. But if you light switch it, it, it's a great flipping action. But you have to light switch it. You have to. But it's amazing for with light switching. Just you can't push button it. So some knives are like that. Um, When I first started getting into knives, I was all about flippers. But the longer I'm in, the more I prefer thumb studs. It goes around in a circle. So... When you get into knives, you, you spe specifically like one thing and then um, you start opening up, you know, to everything else. And eventually you it's like you just go in a circle. So like the thing you loved in the beginning, you wind up getting completely away from because you, everybody likes to experience new things. And then once you have, you know, you want to try more of it. And then, um, you know, like the one thing that you weren't used to, you start getting used to like say thumb studs, and then you just love those. But then eventually you'll be back to flippers, and, you know, and then you'll go back to thumb studs. It'll just be a big cycle. Um, just like even, I noticed that it even goes the same way for like your, um, your preferences and looks like the way things look. Like, you'll be into, say, titanium, right? And then next year, you'll be like, you know, I, I'm into micarta. Then, um, you you know, you won't want nothing to micarta. You'll want, uh, you know, all button locks and aluminum or something. But then you'll be back to titanium, guaranteed. Sometimes you do find that thing and um, you stick with it with certain things. But even like with me, like with nice thin grinds, right? I still am attracted to thick, heavy duty grinds. And there's some times where I like to carry a nice big ass knife, even though I love me a mega slicer. But um, I think it's good to just be open, open to just about everything. And if you know what you do too, if you know like your routine, 
That doesn't mean you shouldn't have a knife for things that are outside of your routine. But when you're in a routine, you tend to, to like the thing that's, that works best for that routine. But like I said, I still think it's good to get into things that are not in your routine. Now, I got a knife I'm going to open up really quick. I got this knife in for sharpening. But I want to say a couple things about it because, one, I never seen this knife before. I guess it's the Emerson uh, sp uh, PM2 or something like that. I think that's some something like that. The C81. So, but I had a lot of things to say about this thing, or at least a few things. So, here it is. It's a PM2 handle, compression lock. We got a brass backspacer and pen right here but this blade is wicked now this is the thickest grind i've ever felt on a spider go i mean i got to imagine this thing's like 35 thousandths behind the edge that's what i'm thinking um and i'm not saying that that's bad because when I look at this thing, I know what this thing's for. You know what I mean? I'm sure you guys know what this thing's for too. You know, this thing is for self-defense. This thing is for doing damage and it will. And you see it has the, uh, the hook, you know, for when you pull it out of your pocket, hooks your pocket, flips open the, uh, the Emerson wave. The action's great on it. It's not a hollow grind. It is a flat grind. But the edge, I've never seen a Spyderco edge like this. It has the weirdest, and this is a factory edge, and it's sharp. It's very, very sharp. It does have a very sharp edge. But it looks, let me see if I can get the camera to pick it up. Look, It looks like it has like a chatter to it. Come on. Can you guys see like the shadowing? Let me see if I pull this away. Eh, there we go. It has like a chattering to it that looks really weird. But I don't know. It's so weird. So I'm going to sharpen it up. But so like a knife like this being this thick. um, You know, it's not really a hard use knife even though it is ground as like a ridiculous hard use knife. I wonder what it is behind the edge. I shouldn't measure it. It's got to be like 35, 40 thousands, but it's not going to be much of a cutter, but if you need to cut something open with it, obviously you can do it. It's, it's still a knife. So even just, and it, and if the edge is sharp, it's going to cut through things, which right now this thing does have a very sharp edge, but I'm going to try to clean it up a bit. And because it looks crazy the way the, the sharpening was done to it. But you could lay back one. Oh, let me say this. One good thing, though, that Spyderco does do that I appreciate from them making when they do thick knives like this is they actually put an edge bevel that makes sense on that grind. So Spyderco will actually do 15 degree edge bevels, 30 inclusive, on knives meaning the edge angle that's on the knife they'll do it uh like a nice big bevel meaning so it'll it'll wind up cutting into things easier a lot of knife companies will give you 30 thousandths behind the edge but they'll make it a 22 degree angle which makes the bevel very tiny and it'll make it not cut very good so but um but I was fascinated with this thing when I opened it up and I was looking at it because it is brand new. I mean, the, the factory edge is nice and fresh. Doesn't feel like it's ever cut anything. And it is very, very sharp. But it's just so weird how it's like, it almost looks like it was supposed to be serrated. Like, like it has a whole bunch of serrations, but except for it is just a regular bevel. That's kind of the way it looks. But. Anyways, I never seen one of those. Um, I th there was a couple other things I was gonna say about it, but I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna put uh, a nice edge on there. It's S30V, and I'll I don't know. I'll probably put a polished edge if that's what he wants, 
Now, the one good thing about a thick edge, right, if it's nice and thick, is that when an edge is thick, you can lay back the angles and it'll actually feel, which it is, right, it'll feel extremely sharp and the, like this one does. The reason why is because the teeth are so big. The, um, you know, because the edge bevel is so big, it comes down to the tip of the apex, and then those teeth at the apex are very big. When you have something very, very thin behind the edge, it might not feel as sharp just because those teeth, and I'm talking about the bite from the edge, it won't, it might not feel as um, sharp, but just because the teeth are smaller. So they're not going to grab you as hard as the big teeth from a thick edge. So um, I'll find out exactly what type of edge. I think I'm going to do a polished edge. I might do a low grip. I don't know, though. I got to talk to him. Um, but S30V, we're going to talk about S30V. Is it chippy? So um, me and Mike Emler disagree with this, which um, we both know. Um, and um, he doesn't like to take S30V to a high grit because he thinks it's well because he his opinion on it is that it's chippy which in my opinion i don't agree that it's chippy i have probably 15 to 20 knives in s30v right now like as we speak at least and half of them have polished edges <clears throat> and they've been used a lot now, I'm not saying that he hasn't experienced S30V with, with chippiness, but maybe it was that specific knife. And other people, too. They might have experienced it, too. But maybe it's that specific heat treat, that specific knife, maybe that specific company, or maybe even the stones that was used to sharpen it. Like, um, And I know this is another thing that people don't agree on a lot, like whether or not certain steels need to be sharpened with diamonds. Um, I, I I think that certain steels should be sharpened with diamonds. And if they're going to be finished with certain things, that's different, but at least sharpened to, with, uh, with diamonds. Um, but anyways, and also tests have shown that too, a little bit like, uh, I'll post 76. He did that test where he did the exact same knife with different edges, one with diamond, one with aluminum oxide, and same angle, same everything. And the diamonds got, I think, like, I've, I don't want to quote it perfectly, but it was something like 200 cuts more or 200 feet more cutting than the aluminum oxide did. Now, I'm not saying that that's what we're talking about here. What we're specifically talking about is whether or not it's going to be chippy. Um, also, what you're doing with it, too, that might have a thing if, you know, maybe you people some people might experience chippiness maybe because they're a little bit harder on it i mean i'm pretty tough on my knives um i'm not saying i haven't gotten chips in s30v of course i have i've gotten chips in everything Fuck, i've gotten chips in probably 3v before but i don't ever consider it a chippy steel and if it's chippy i don't see why it wouldn't still be chi i guess with a finer edge it might be a oh fucking canada Are we having issues, guys? <sighs> I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. Um, it looked like it cut out for a minute. All right. So, anyways, um, with a finer edge... If, well, on my end, like, it just went blank, so. Oh, thank you, Josh. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. High five to you. Or maybe that was a clap. I'll say it's a high five. Thank you, man. Um, But the um, if you take it to a high grit, a polished grit, yeah, it might be a little finer. So if you're experiencing a chippy edge, it could possibly uh, make it uh, maybe a little worse since it's finer. Uh, it might not be as bad with the low grit, but I personally haven't really experienced it with a chippy edge. And, you know, with S35VN, 
you know, I like to do that steel with a low grit because I don't think it likes a high grit. It gets slick. With S30V, I don't find that. S30V, I have no problem putting a polished edge on. It, it gets nasty sharp, and I haven't experienced really any chipping. So, but if you do, if you have S30V and, you know, it, you find it to be chippy, it could possibly be just a burnt edge. Um, I do believe a couple people, I think um, Outpost 76, and I, I know Steve did this. Steve definitely did this. He started his channel on this exact subject, um, Super Steel Steve. And he was testing and, sh and trying to prove that that wasn't the case, that S30V wasn't chippy. And he did all kinds of shit to prove it. So if you guys want to find those videos, that's how he started his channel, was proving that S30V wasn't chippy. Now, like I said, there's always going to be those outliers where, like, um, you have a knife and S30V is chippy. Well, that's the heat treat. Burnt edge, burnt steel, whatever, right? But then the mass majorities doesn't. So, and that's why I said I have, you know, 15 or 20 knives in it that, that don't. So, um, oh, knife sergeant, you had to go to the ER yesterday. Hopefully everything is okay, man. Obviously you're here on the live, so you are at least alive. But uh, hopefully all is well. So I got, I think I talked about this before. I was going to pull it up, but I'll let you guys chit chat for a second with Nice Sergeant while I look at this. Oh, shout out to the patrons, man. You guys are awesome, man. Thank you for all the support you guys do. I really appreciate all the patrons, Patreons, patrons. You guys are badass. What do you guys think about weird looking knives? COVID. Oh, you got COVID. Oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully, um, all is well with you, brother. We'll pray for you. Um, hopefully you're getting better now. Getting some, uh, I spilled a bunch of shit. Getting, uh, some vitamins in you and some medicine in you and stuff. And hopefully you're feeling better now. It sucks, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, weird looking knives, weird looking knives, um, blade shapes, like crazy blade shapes, you know, like, so you, we see a lot of companies, right? And I've heard people say that, you know, oh, it's another knife, right? You, I, everybody's heard this, right? Like uh, a knife company comes out with a knife and people are like, oh, it's another knife, right? It looks like another knife. You know, they, they played it safe, so to speak. Well, the unconventional looking knives, right? Some people might say that, um, oh, I'm glad that they did that because it doesn't look like everything else out there, right? It looks, it's a, it's a nice, you know, fresh looking thing that everybody else doesn't have. It's unique, blah, 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 blah. But will they buy it, <laughs> right? Because you got to think from the knife company's point of view, they want to make what sells, they don't, you know, just because you're happy that they made something innovative or something new or something that looks weird or cool or whatever. If they make 500 of them and only 100 of them sell because everybody else wants something that works good and is known to work, right? And is known to be um, a good performer. It doesn't benefit the company, and that's why a lot of companies do try to stick to what works. They try, you know, and sometimes it does boil down to it's another knife. It's another drop point. It's another, you know, flipper, or it's another this, because it'll sell. Um, so I'm wondering what you guys think about that subject, like the weird-looking knives, the knives that don't look like everything out there. Is that your bet? Is that your cup of tea? Do you guys like that stuff? Or I find myself personally sticking towards more of the conventional stuff. I'm not saying I don't like the weird stuff. I do like some weird stuff every now and then. But um, 
but I tend to like what works that works best for me. And I do like different blade shapes. Um, but there's like when it gets real wacky, right? I, I what I see sometimes is oh, that's not going to be comfortable, you know, in my hand. Or, oh, that's going to be an issue, right? Like, those are the things I see. And sometimes, just because it looks cool, you know, and th I guess that's where it's got to boil down to. Are you using it or are you just, you know, playing with it? As I, is it just like a, a collector piece, something you can just play with and then sell later, you know, make a couple cuts with, but nothing you're really working with? Um, yeah, function over form. That's what my eye gets attracted to. Now, I like it when I can mix both. When I, could, But my eye's attracted to something that looks like it works good. So I find that attractive. Now, if you can take that and make it look really good too, awesome. But when I get those really wicked looking knives that where I'm looking at it like, fuck, man, that thing is, you know, going to be more problems to use than it will be fun to use. I mean, everybody's different and some people like the really crazy looking things. How was your independence day? Oh man, I had, I had a blast. Got to blow some stuff up. Uh, fireworks, uh, pulled a muscle in both my legs. <laughs> I don't even know how woke up with that. Um, but no, I had a lot of fun, a lot of fun, family, friends, good times. Um, what Jared, you look at that VC edge interface at VC edge. What is the VC? I don't know what we're talking about. Um, remind me, I can't remember. Yeah, I seen that. I seen Kara did great. That she did, she did awesome. I seen that. I wasn't, I didn't know she was going to do that, but uh. I had a sneaky suspicion, but yeah, no, she did do awesome. You guys are awesome too. I've seen all the donations you guys sent and you guys are great. I appreciate you guys uh, doing that. Custom knives. I got the, I got the Trevor burger right here. Atlas. Amazing. And then I got uh, the Oz Roosevelt right here. And uh, I got two other ones, but they're over there in a box. That's according to Spiderco Forum, by the way. Never had one. Thank you, William. Um, I like the Kaiser Comrade. I'm waiting to get one. I should be getting one soon. Hopefully. We'll see. We will see. But... I've been trying to get one because that looks like a really good fidget knife and a very useful knife. It kind of reminds me of the smock. So I'm hoping to get one soon. Hopefully. Dalika's the only knife you need. Change my mind. I won't. I won't change your mind at all because I've seen all the work you've done with yours. I mean, the thing, it builds sheds, uh, bridges. Uh, garages, hangs lights. I mean, I, I think it's uh, pretty hard to argue that. <laughs> He'd make a video uh, and it'd be like his um, his like front porch or something like where he's hanging lights and he'd pull out his Dalika and be like, did it all with the Dalika. <laughs> Are bag knives worth it? Because they seem cool to me. I'm not a bag fan, but other people that are very reputable say they're like the Lamborghini of knives, so I'm not going to argue with them. I think with me, it's personally a look thing. I don't think they look the coolest. Some people, like, I guess you'd say, like, to me, they look a little gas station knifey, but I know they're high end knives, so I'm not saying they look like a gas station knife. I'm not saying that at all. Um, fantasy knife, that's what I'm looking for. They look like a little fantasy knife ish, but. Sometimes that's kind of the cool thing, right? It's like, can you get that look in real materials and high-end materials with the best action in the world? And 
you know, it's kind of like taking that fantasy thing and making the real deal, right? So I think they're amazing. I think they're awesome. Um, but I just, I'm personally not a huge fan of the way they look. But I can understand they're like amazing quality. Which, there's always going to be those knives. We got to stick together. Life is better with backup. That's true. Damn true. What do you think of knives that are ultra heavy, inspired by other knife designs, for example? I don't know the knife you're talking about, but I don't mind weight so much. Now, there's always a limit, right? There's a limit of which you're like, what the fuck, right? I don't want I don't want a pocket knife that's heavier than my hammer. You know, I don't want to, you know, that's 20, 22 ounces. But I never worry about weight, really. I'm always wearing jeans, so... You know, I mean, I, my tool belt that I carried on my hips for how many years, 25 years, <laughs> you know, pocket knife is the last thing that I'm worried about carrying, but there is a limit. Like I, I, um, what was it? It was like a brass Mannix one time and that thing was pretty heavy. It was probably like 11 ounces or something, but I still carried it. I didn't mind it, but then you switch to something that's three ounces, and it is easier to carry. It is easier to 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 wield around. You know, you don't when you're sitting down, you don't feel it resting on your leg. But I don't mind weight. Now, what I do mind is weight that doesn't make sense. Like if you're talking about a knife that's just obnoxious and it's just obnoxiously thick and it doesn't do anything it's just a paperweight now you're just you're just being ridiculous and you're just making weight to make weight rather than making a tool and it just being the weight it is it goes both ways so i got your back too brother you have the same last name as my best friend by the way i don't think he's talking to me maybe he is i don't know did you end up picking up one of those non-flipper full-size sheepdogs before they went out of stock? I should have one on the way. I talked to old Kaiser. They asked me if I wanted anything or if I wanted to check anything out. I said, yeah. So, not Mojave either. Mojave Outdoors, I got some things coming from them. But I specifically asked Kaiser. I was supposed to get the prototype um, October. The uh the titanium version and the big sheepdog. We'll see. I hope so because I really want to get it. I was kind of upset, and the thing was, was I didn't want to buy it. Like, and I don't mean <laughs> that was such a dickhead statement. I would buy it if I had to, but I didn't want to buy it if I already had one coming. And I was under the assumption that I had one coming. Well, then I found out that it was going to be a couple weeks and. I was thinking about, well, should I just buy one? Um, but it's like, I don't want to buy one. Then another one shows up. Like, they show up right at the same time. And then I bought one for nothing. Like, I can't be wasting money on the channel, you know, just stupidly. But it would be one I would absolutely buy. Hey, clown. Thank you. Your wife already did this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trying to get my watch game up to your level, not mine. I got a couple okay watches. Not nothing like some of you guys, though. I'm Jared. I don't buy I do buy knives. I bought one today. I did. I bought one today. I got a good deal on it too. Um I do buy knives. That's the thing, though, is I have to be I I had to be um Smart with the money. Thank you, Meg. Here's some money for the channel, but oh, you're sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, I I can't. Thing is, is that I can't like waste money buying something that's already coming. Right? That's just that's not smart. Like I have to be. I have to make educated decisions for the channel. That's better for the channel. Like buying, you know, say if it's sixty, seventy dollars, that's another knife that I could put into it. You know, and I, I have to be smart on like what's coming in and what I have 
for the channel going forward. It's kind of like if I have a hundred dollars extra spend, I'm not going to spend it on an old model that's not going to get any views. I'm going to try to find something new for you guys that you guys will like. And then if somebody else has the other knife, I'll ask them or they'll offer, let me check it out. That way I don't have to put the money towards the, the channel because channel's expensive. <laughs> um, but people don't realize how expensive uh, running a channel is. It, it, it gets crazy. Uh, I'm going to talk later, Shane. Um, I picked up the oh, – oh, awesome, the Rev October. I'm liking it. It's an awesome knife. That's why I really want to try that titanium version because – the micarta version is so awesome. And I can't believe Lefty doesn't like Kaiser's micarta. Kaiser has some of the nicest micarta for, you know, for production knife micarta. It is so nice. CJ, CJRB, they have really nice micarta too. So, and they theirs is USA made micarta. I believe Kaiser's might be too. I'm not 100% about that, but I know they used to have crappy micarta. People bitched enough, and now they got good micarta, really good micarta. And their micarta, some of their micarta doesn't look like everybody else's. Sometimes people got to understand there's not just one kind of micarta. There's like 150 different kinds of micarta, and that's kind of the beauty of the micarta. Is it buffering? Sorry, guys. So the... the um. The micarta, though, oh, fuck, man, this damn thing. We might have to call it a quits. Okay, so, but what you want to look at is the quality of the micarta, and I don't think some people can see past that. Man, let me know when we're good, guys. I don't want to keep talking for nothing. We got 94 people in here while we're fucking buffering. You, YouTube's out to get me. That's all it is. YouTube's trying to sabotage me. It's trying for me not to get the 75 likes. That's what it is. YouTube doesn't want me to hit 75 likes. Are we good? 450 to burn. What do I get? Go. Um, Leong Ma field duty or, or, um, uh, if you want to go USA made, you get a couple things, but, uh, go, uh, you can go with a Spartan. You can go with a, um, Chris Reeve. How well does the micarta stain? Thank you for the donation, Mick. So my carta, you can wash it. It's pretty easy to. Oh, are you talking about to rit dye? You can rit dye it. You just want to be careful with the boiling of the water. I've seen a bunch of people that have rit dyed it. So if you're trying to dye it, yes, you can. If you're talking about like just dirt and stains, you can wash it. It's easy to wash. Now, what I was saying earlier, if Canada would just stay out of my life, um. The quality is what you want to look at. So, like, say saying, okay, I don't like the color, right? That's one thing. You don't like the color. But the quality, you, you know, like, you can look at my card and see quality. So, one way to look at my card when you're looking for quality is, one, one way is blotches. Blotches, like, it'll be blotchy. So, you'll see, like, resin, and then you'll see fabric. Resin, fabric. When you have it like that, you know it's not that great on my card um, they're, um, it's, it's almost like, uh, when they, they finished it, like some of the, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the fabric came out and some didn't, but when you got like a, uh, you can see the fibers and you can see that the, that you don't see the resin, right? You just see the fibers. That's when you know you have good quality micarta. Now, if the micarta is supposed to be like the dense, really hard stuff, the stuff that you don't feel the fabric, that's another story. That, that can be good quality micarta, but in that case, then you should be able to still see the fibers 
through the resin. The resin shouldn't mix the fibers together to where it just looks like a turd, right? Um, or where it almost looks like a drawing or something. You should actually be able to see it through the resin. So being able to see good or understand what you're looking at, I guess, is um is a big deal when you're talking about micarta and the quality. And you know, it's just saying you don't like the look, like there's a lot, some micartas. I personally do not like the way it looks. However, I can say it's good quality. Like I can say like, this is really good. My card, really good. It's not my style. I wouldn't buy it just because I prefer something else, but I can't deny that it's great quality. My card. So, but everybody's different. Everybody likes different stuff. Uh, rub, rub it all over you. <laughs> TRM, if you can find one, I'll tell you what, that TRM shadow is where it's at. That shadow, that's a badass knife. The Payson coming out. Uh, I don't have a Payson, um, but um, I'm telling y'all for a lock back, the spider goes where it's at. It's amazing. Tell them about the compression lock. Uh, flicking the neutron right now. Mine's over there. Uh, anyways, uh, but uh, but yeah, compression locks are sweet. I do like compression locks. All right. So, talking about spine wedges. Let's talk about some spine wedges. So, oh, into production? I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe. Why did you hear something about it coming at back out? The Payson? Uh, I wish Tucson would start using better micarta. I think they are. So that 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 um 301, why did I call it the 313 earlier? The 301, that one has good good micarta. Way better than they used to have. And then uh but you can kind of see in the picture there are other micarta. That's kind of what I'm talking about, too. If you know what you're looking at, you can tell their micarta is shitty. Except for, like, the 301, that's decent. It's not great, but it's nowhere near bad. It's okay. It's decent micarta. Especially compared to shit micarta. Yeah, Metal Complex has mentioned it several times, but I don't know if he's just joking. I have no idea. I didn't hear nothing about it. Uh, that'd be cool, though. I dislike the micarta on my riffle. So that micarta, it, yeah, it's okay. It's not, yeah, it's not great quality micarta. I would never say like this is, and if I have, I misspoke that this is great micarta. It's okay. It's not, uh, yeah, it's nothing to sit there and brag about. It's better than some shit micarta, uh, but yeah, it's not the best. I do. I will say, like the old elementum versus the new elementum, it did slightly change. I can tell it's the same micarta or same company, same whatever making it, but they like just they changed something, like maybe added a little less resin or something, because it's just so slightly different that you almost think it's the same, but it's not. It is slightly different. I want some burgundy micarta so bad. Yeah, that burgundy micarta is pretty pretty good. I'd like to see burgundy micarta come out different. Meaning um like like uh, different kinds of cuz there's you know there's linen micarta, there's denim micarta, there's um burlap micarta. I'd like to see them do that in different like the Kaiser had that that red linen micarta like on the bag lighter, that looks pretty good. That's a good looking micarta, but it's not burgundy. It's just red. So I'm saying burgundy like that, that would be really sweet because then you would get the whites and the burgundy coming through. I think that'd be sweet. So we can just sit here and just keep shooting this shit, but I was going to talk about some spine wedges, Um, but you guys might not even want to talk about spine wedges. 
Uh, but uh, talking about what spine wedges are good for. What are spine wedges good for? The wedge on the top of a spine of a blade. There's different kinds. So uh, let's see if I got some around here. So some spine wedges are for, like if we looked at this one again, or if we look at here, we'll see this one right here is going to be mostly for the tip of the blade, because what it's going to do is it's going to make the tip, the top of the tip thinner and smaller for poking, but then thick on the sides, kind of like an arrow. Think about shooting an arrow with a bow. It's going to give it strength on the sides, but then also nice, there are not a lot of steel behind the top and the bottom. So it's going to have strong or better penetration, but also strength on the sides to, you know, for, so it doesn't chip, especially if you poke through something and turn a little bit, it's not going to have less likely of a chance of just breaking off. So it gives it strength while making it stabby. If the swedge wasn't there, it actually makes the tip thick. It makes it have less likely of a chance of penetrating and it'd be more stubby. Now, a, a swedge on a spine, like say right here on the 940, that's for when you're slicing through things. When you have just, um, say, just a full flat grind. So kind of like this, like just a full flat grind. The material, through dense materials or through certain materials, it, it winds up being, being like a swedge where it just goes like this and just splits, right? But then sometimes that swedge can make it get stuck going through, depending on the geometry. But the swedge can help the materials go around the blade, where once it gets to the spine, instead of it just putting pressure because the, the spine of the blade will be touching both sides of the material it's going through. And the pressure from that material will be putting, or the material will be putting pressure on the spine of the blade. Instead, it'll leave a little air pocket on the spine of the blade where the material isn't putting pressure. So now it has less resistance slicing through something, making the materials go around it. So just a little, you know, felt like some people might not understand what the swedges are for. Now, that's not saying that a full flat grind doesn't slice better than a knife with a swedge. It's just some grinds would benefit with a swedge because of the geometry. Then some knives with specific geometry might be better without it because the geometry is already so good. It's like, you know, it's like a laser. So depending on that, uh, that grind and also what you're cutting, that's another thing. A good swedge can make or break the look and function of a knife. True. Yeah. And that's another thing is that sometimes just adding a swedge can make a knife look sweet. Um, when, if it wasn't there, it would be like, eh, you know, it looks so you know, average or just looks so, you know, like every other knife, but then you throw a swedge on it and, and then you can do a different finish because with a swedge, you know, now you have more options for a different finish on the swedge. You can make it look really good. And then, yeah. And then function too. <clears throat> even weight relief, weight relief, uh, slicing capabilities, um, poking and penetrating capabilities are bringing the thickness, like I said, down to the, down to the tip. So many benefits. Seems logical says, if you want to talk about spine ridges, you should talk about double fullered kukras. Those are perfect examples of that swedge mechanic. There you go. Yeah. Um, the, uh, what was the name of that? Um, so, Seems logical sent me, he sent me a kukri um, a while back, um, a, an authentic one. You guys should watch that video. Hey, uh, man, it was badass. It was sweet. It was all handmade. I believe the steel was made out of a, um, oh, man, what was it? It was made out of um, spring steel from a, a truck or something like that. I forget. From the, um, the spring leaves. 
Leaf Springs. Why did I say spring leaves? Leaf Springs. I'm such an idiot. The Leaf Springs. Full hollow is where it's at. Yeah, I like I, this is basically a full hollow. The the Kaiser Duke Dukes. It is sweet. This is such a badass knife. Um, more likes than current watchers. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, people are probably taking off. That's probably why. Um, so what do we get to? Let's see what we got to. Andy likes. Awesome, awesome. You guys are amazing. Some of you guys I know like to uh, like on uh, multiple uh, devices, so that always helps. A real classic katana had a diamond style shape. Nice. There are so many different, even katanas, right? If you look at katanas, I'm not talking about like just the traditional one, right? But if you look at swords, katanas, uh, just, you know, all different uh, kinds of shapes, there's so many different uh, like styles and shapes and swedges here and <clears throat> uh, grinds here. And there's so, I mean, Obviously, we've been doing this for so long, you know, in history that everything's been tried. And so, and then originally what the things were made for or why we did certain things. Now, you know, we're basically doing for the same thing, but on a smaller scale. <laughs> Excuse me. Made out of a leaf spring from a B. Yes, a BM. I was going to say a Mercedes. Good thing I didn't say that. A BMW truck. 5160 spring steel. Yes, yes, yes. I almost said a Mercedes truck. That's hilarious. Good thing I didn't. Rainbow blood grooves. Uh, CGRB Scoria N690 in my card. $109. Worth it if you're in love with the 940 design. The smock is a full hollow. Uh, the smock is, um, it's a, it's a half a hollow. <clears throat> Am I right? Yeah. Look at this motherfucker. I should just pull it up right here because I was going to check this out. Look at what I got on the other side. Bang. I had this pulled up <laughs> because I wanted to go through some knives because I got $213 sitting with this company still. And I need to pick out a damn knife to buy. But every time I come on this page, I can't ever pick a knife out. Um, a QSP woodpecker looks kind of cool, but it's old at this point, and everybody's reviewed it. And you know, I, I see the Genesis. I haven't tried the Genesis. That looks kind of interesting, and it's the exact amount of money that I have with them. So that's not a bad idea. I did look at that. I was looking at this uh, the arc form, but there was a different one. Let's see if you guys will be able to come to this next page with me. Let's see. We'll go through. Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. So we got, uh, we already have the Imperium. We got two of the M's. Oh, I got this upshot here right now. Um, I'll sh show it here in a second. Or, you know what? This is a sweet knife. It really is. This is a badass knife. I do like this upshot. Um, yeah, that's a that's a cool knife, and I, but I think they're only making it in small runs, so I'd rather get a knife that people are going to continue to be able to buy, and because it'll be good for the channel. Um, the smock blade in a uh, blade HQ and M four soon, really nice. I like me some M4. You ever heard uh, Apostle P say it? He goes, CPM M4. <laughs> He's in church or something. Max A Samurai looks kind of cool, but I'd have to get a couple knives then. This site, it just it doesn't, I mean, they do have a lot of knives, but they just don't always have like, I don't know, like, this seems like I'm I'm always uh every time I come on here and like look for a knife, they just never have what I want. 
I do like the Ace Biblio, but I've already had two of them. I gave away one that was uh, the Burgundy, and then we've and then we've had the brown one already. She hates the Ace Biblio. She hates it. But uh, to its credit, that was when Giant Mouse had some other company making them, and they they were made in Italy, and they were. They had a lot of variables like Italian companies do. Like I always say, it's, you can have three of the same model and they'll all be different. Now, React's doing them. So, um, man, you know what would be cool? I don't know why they never did an Ace Biblio non flipper because I cut the flipper off of mine. I wound up uh, selling it or trading it or something, but um, that was sweet. The non flipper version of. An Ace Biblio, they should have just did that off the jump. I got that little swan, the kite, the concept swan. Um, I actually got it right here. I got or this, I got the swedge and the swan. The swedge is the lock backing version. I got that right here. I got a review coming up soon on it. It's actually really good quality for a little lock back. Uh, I don't want the. Uh, Nimbus. It looks kind of cool though. The Wee Thug? I can't even think of it. But that's it's got a badass name. I do like the Ace Rev. I do like that. And I think Kara would love that too because it's like a tiny little Ace Biblio. That's what it is. It's a mini Ace Biblio. And we know how much she loves the Ace Biblio. Um, I never tried the Shard. That thing looks kind of cool, but I could probably talk to Concept if I really, really wanted to try it. Um, Grateful Panic AK John has a GoFundMe going and really needs our help. If you could stop by it and donate, it would be super awesome. There you go. Check out that GoFundMe that Monster just put up on the page. Definitely help people out as much as possible in this community. Because I think it's important for us to stay the way we've been by being as tight knit as possible. What do you guys think about this wee knife screech? Let's look at this thing. Two twenty five. It's a little bit over the budget, but only by a couple dollars. So it looks pretty sweet. Um, I don't know. Let me look at the other side. Not bad. I mean, it's made by Wee Knives, so, you know, it's good quality. Uh, let's look at that flipper tab. Oh, nice jumping on the flipper tab. That thing don't look too bad. We might have to... That might be the one, maybe. Maybe not, but maybe. I like it, kind of. Drop point blade. I wish it was a hollow grind. It looks like it's going to be a little bit of a harder use grind. Sometimes, though, these grinds can... Uh, be deceiving. I always thought the Astacus, man, besides the name, it's a damn good looking knife, man. Man, it's a damn good looking knife. It just looks like, like the most useful knife. And now that I think about it, this was technically, I mean, I know it has an overlay, so it's technically a liner lock, but if you think about it, that's kind of Savivi's first frame lock Let's see what else we got let's keep moving who's watching diamond oh wait diamond versus mcgregor saturday i didn't even know about it i can't believe i didn't know about it i'm gonna watch it now i love watching all them fights all them damn fights Kershaw Lightyear. <laughs> oh, check this out, guys. I know I've shit on um I've shit on zero tolerance. I was looking at that one knife that they have. I'll see if I can find it in here. I almost there's the knife I returned right there. They got it back up. Don't get it. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I don't get it. That's Spider Co right there. Don't get it. Um the mini synergy damn 405 dollars holy shit but that new 
um, zero tolerance knife that has that, uh, it's kind of like the buck marksman. The, I think that's the way it locks. Let me see if I can just look one up really quick. I thought about getting one because I've kind of shit on them a little bit. So I thought that maybe it would be, um, good for me to get one in hand for shower ZT show more. Here we go. Sorry, I'm pulling up a company. Uh, Gil Hibben. Wow. There it is. All right. Let's go to zero tolerance. All right. So do we see the new one that they have? Where is that new knife? Here it is. So I thought about, I was looking at this, 220. What do you guys think? So if you look at the spine of it, it has, I, I don't know. I think that's the way it locks. Let's look at this picture. You see that? How that thing is right there? I'm going to pull, I'll pull it right back up. But here, I just want to make myself big really quick. So I'll pull it right back up though. But if you look at the Buck Marksman, you see how it's very similar to this. So I'm wondering if it's like this, where you literally use the strap right here to unlock it. Is it the same as that? You think so, Russ? Maybe, maybe I should. Because I've been giving them a lot of shit, okay? I have. I've been giving Zero Tolerance so much shit that maybe I should review one before. Because this was the coolest looking one to me. I did say that I think they went a little too futuristic. I thought they went just a little too far with their, you know, their uh, futuristic look this year. It's like they, they were like, okay, it's 2021. Let's act like it's 2045. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and it looks like you can reverse flick it and flip it. But I don't know. I mean, that's the way it looks like it locks is with that thing. I mean, I does it say the type of lock it has? Because I want to hear what they're calling it. Oh, it's out of stock. I can't get it anyways. Uh, skeletonized structure, carbon fiber scale, window cutouts, you know, heat treated. Listen to that. 20 CV blade steel. It's heat treated for an, for an exceptional hardness. You guys hear that? Zero tolerance is... Heat treating their 20 CV for an exceptional hardness, wear resistance, and edge retention. I call bullshit. <laughs> oh, a lot of ZTs I've tried have soft steel. I'm not going to say all of them, though. Now, the rumor has it, and I'm not saying, I, I'm not starting this rumor. This is what I heard, is that these knives aren't fully USA made. And I'm not trying to spread no rumors or anything like that, but word on the streets is that their parts are made in China and then shipped over here and they assemble them here. I don't know. I don't know how true that is. I could be just, you know, just sp spreading misinformation right now. But something I heard, something I heard that uh, they, they're, they're basically made in China, and then the parts are shipped over here, and then they assemble them over here. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, or maybe they're wrong, who I heard that from. I don't know. Like Olamic, but that's Italy, though. They're at least in Italy where they're made, I believe. I believe. It's an old model rehash. So, I guess this one sold out. I couldn't see what type of lock it was. I might have just passed it up. But it would be cool, though, to uh, to check them out, though. Or check out one of these new ZTs. Just because I haven't had a new ZT on the channel in a while. They have this one. Oh, these are all pre-order. This one's not saying anything. So this one's a pre-order one. This one's pretty crazy looking. 320. Oh man, I'm not doing that. Not for that. Oh man. I mean, it's it's really not a bad looking knife, 
But now they're doing that new D10 system that I I hear is not as good as their old D10 system. Everybody gave this knife a bunch of shit. I'll be honest. I thought it was cool. You guys beat the hell out of ZT for this knife. The 0223 frame lock. I thought it looked cool. I thought it was badass. And you guys, all the holes at the bottom of the blade, come on, man. That's the blood grooves, man. That's to keep the blood off your hands. <laughs> I honestly, I thought, I didn't think it was that bad. But you guys tore this thing to pieces. Z Zero Tolerance almost lost their business because of this knife because of you guys. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, they got a, a second page. Uh, what else do they got? I love the 0562. Love the 0562. And that one's just a little too much money. We only got 213 in the bank, so. Um, the RJ Martin design, the 0609, that's another good one. I did like that one, too. That one was sweet. Let's uh let's go back to well, let's see some brands really quick. Let's check out some uh, not Boss Tech. Uh, what else do they got? Let's try out some Wee Knives. What does Wee Knife got? Uh, dun, 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 dun. we got the Upshot there. This thing looks crazy. I don't know who would buy this. Not me, though. Uh, but I will say this. This is kind of like what I was talking about earlier, right? When I said um, crazy, right? Crazy looking knives. I think it looks kind of cool, to be honest. And I know what it's like a Roman, you know, kind of look. I get it. Now, are you guys buying one of these? How many of you guys are buying one of these? Because I really hope the guy who runs around saying, oh, it just looks like another knife. It just looks like another knife. I wish they'd come out with something more innovative. Or I wish to... I hope you bought this. <laughs> I hope you're buying this. Because it actually looks pretty cool. I bet that thing is thin, thin, thin. The, the blade, I mean. Um. It'd be a badass little office knife or a package opener. Oh, wow. It's got a swedge on top. You see that? Look at the swedge. It's got a swedge on top. Oh, shit. That's pretty cool. Can you guys see that? Yeah. It's got like a swedge on top. That's actually pretty cool. I'm trying to get out of it. Sorry, guys. Pink. <laughs> Oh, it's out of stock. You guys already bought it up. You guys bought it up. Oh, uh, what else do we got? Man, I can't believe that Synergy is so much money. Is it an Integral? It better be an Integral for that much money. I don't see it saying Integral anywhere. Not sold out. Hollow Grind has kind of a it's a unique blade shape and i can tell because i had a knife this same shape before and it had a persian blade on it but because of the handle shape it actually was a persian blade that you could easily use its tip the way it was shaped you could like when you pointed down like just like you would do with like a utility blade the tip went right down so you could actually use it as a utility blade it was a fully functioning persian blade usually persian blades aren't as functional because you can't you can't use the tip as easily but um this one looks badass to me but holy cow that's expensive oh, man. I, I can't i can't see 405 dollars there that's that's stupid it must be an integral. Hold on a second. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to go back. Look at this. I think it might be an integral. Did you guys catch that? Or no, wait. Where'd it go? Oh, maybe my eyes were just looking. Yes. Look right here. You see this? Look at this. Look at right next to the um the pivot. Do you see this line here? How it goes around right here? 
And then look, there's two more lines right here. Almost like if you take this off, you're going to be able to open this up. I don't know if it's an integral or not, but isn't that weird how it has these lines? Do you guys see what I'm talking about? I have the Iona. The synergy is junk, but it is an integral. Bang. Thank you. Thank you for uh, answering that question for me because now I feel like a genius because I did not see it say integral and I figured out it was an integral by by being uh, um, an investigator. Uh, but yeah, it, that thing is expensive. Even, and you know, that was kind of like, it's an integral, so you can kind of see the price, and, or I can see the price now, but that's why, like, that Tucson TS-195, when I bought that, I mean, shit, man, if that thing was sold by any other company, it would be a four to $600 knife. Eithen, that's a badass knife. I've got one of those already. Sweet knife, though. Man, they got a lot of them in, though, don't they? They even got this one with the um the badass pattern. That's cool, man. Look at that. That is sweet. That anno work with the milling, that's badass. Let's see what else we can find, because we should be able to find. Something. Oh, they got a gold one too with that pattern. What is that? What is this? How did I miss this? The Esprit? A spirit? Is this new? Pre order. Okay, pre order. Okay, yeah, it's new. Or it got sold out. It looks like a Ray Laconico design. Doesn't it? It looks kind of like a Laconico. Finger or the sharpening toil looks pretty good. Um, orange peel, frame lock. I can't tell if it's a flat or a hollow. Pretty sweet though. Um, doesn't look like it's too crazy expensive. Twenty CV, uh, titanium. What's up with this thing? Let's check this thing out. Is that double-edged? That's single-edged. It just looks double-edged. They're trying to trick me. Let's look at it closed. How do you open it? Oh, it must be a top flipper. Sorry, guys. I'm not trying to make you guys go crazy, like flipping this thing in and out. I'm trying to pick this up right here. Why does it do that to me? It's not grabbing the right one. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so yeah, it's a top flipper. And the spine is not sharpened. It doesn't look like, but it looks like it could be sharpened. <laughs> Somebody out there is like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, did I back up too far? What is that? Is this this? Why does my computer keep doing this to me? I'm sorry, guys. It's like, it's doing it. Um, it's doing it itself. I'm not doing all this. So it looks like the same knife, but except for a drop point blade. That's kind of cool. Front flipper. I want to see the all tie version though. I thought there was an all tie version. What the fuck? This thing's just trying to piss me off today. What was it on page two or was it page three? How did it? All right, something's going on. I might have to just get out of this because this is crazy. There we go. Now it's back to this. Okay, so I think that G10, or is that all tie? G10. Oh, okay, so it's G10 and carbon fiber. Oh, man. Too bad they don't have a micarta version. That thing's pretty sweet. What do you guys think about that? Integral handle? Is it integral too? What? 
All right. I'm, I'm about to just cancel out because this thing's like, it's going crazy on me. It keeps doing things that I'm not telling it to do. All right. I'm just getting out of this. Fuck this. Yeah, it does look kind of nice. I think I might check that one out after um, I'm done with this live. That I haven't seen that one. That was my first time. Maybe I did see that on somebody's channel. Um, what is the limit for everyone's knife spending on one knife? Mine's usually around 250. 250, 280 is like the max. Um, because I just, you know, I I just can't afford it. Um, I, I like to spend more, you know, but usually 300 is. You know, I'm kind of checked out after 300. I'm not saying like there's not special occasions, you know, but it's hard for me to justify over $300 for a knife when like, okay. So like if I was in a different place and like things were just rocking, you know, and like, you know, money was just flowing in, then yeah, I could justify it. But right now, I, I look at things like that's this, right? Like that's, you know, this much money. Like that's, you know, kind of like how I said before to somebody that was buying like, you know, a thousand dollar custom knife, you know, it's like me, I'd be looking like that's a damn transmission for my car, you know, <laughs> like, but eventually I would like to get into the five, $600 range, just not at the moment. Um, right now, like I said, 300 is the limit right now, but, uh, what's up slicey? Here's the big spender. The big spenders in the house right here. Um, but, uh, I've been very blessed by a lot of people that have, uh, donated knives that I, I could only dream about, you know, which is so amazing. So I've gotten to experience and own the knives I do because of them. Very late. I was watching wrestling. Watching some wrestling. Oh hell. That's hilarious. Um what the hell is that saying? Yeah, I literally can't stop looking at all the Shuros. They are stuck in my head. Yeah, I'm on one track mine. Yeah, the Shuros are nice. So I like the larger Shuros, to be honest. I don't I'm not a big fan of the smaller ones. I've tried a bunch of them. I've tried three of the, like the neon, the Hatian, and one other one I tried of the smaller ones. They're, they're very nice. Very, very nice. And they are more affordable. Like you can get them for like four or 500 bucks, sometimes cheaper, just depends. But the larger ones are more expensive. So, you know, sometimes double the price, but however, in my opinion, they are way better. Like my F95 frag, that thing is sweet. So sweet. But um the the F3R I have in carbon fiber, that thing is equally as sweet. Like it's hard to pick which one's even better. I like a frag titanium, so that's probably why I would pick the titanium one, but the uh the carbon fiber one's probably better. Like if, you know, like if you were going to pick like which one's just a better knife, probably the, the F3R because it just is. <laughs> it's so sweet. And the build quality is so good on it. And it's hard to see the build quality without having it for a while. That's another thing with the Shiro. So you know how knives, you flip them for six months, right? You flip them for six months, you adjust them here, you know, you this and that. With a Shiro, it's not like that. It's like. You can have it for six months flipping it, using it, and you've never adjusted it. It's never came off of centering. It's uh, just when you take them apart and put them back together, right to center. Like it's there's little tiny details that really show the tolerances and the build quality. Um, and there's no play, no play at all. Like you don't, I've never felt a hint of any type of play like it's so solid yet it's so smooth yet it never comes like like i said out of place or out of whack i never have to adjust it there's just so many details that make certain knives that level that level of quality 
I don't think that works, and my Russian isn't that good. Um, I think I saw something on Instagram earlier where Cheryl is using caged bearings now. Well, they do have caged bearings, so they have different kinds of bearings. So they have the ones that are um, like was the triple row bearings or whatever. They have the multi row bearings. They have they even have some that have the the needle bearings. Um, what's another word for them? Uh, roller bearings. So it just depends. But yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, that, that, you know, let me say this though. The one thing about the Shuro, people get scared about taking them apart. And I've taken some apart that did have this where you take them apart. And when you take out the, cause it usually has a, um, a washer that holds the balls, but when you take them out, they all just fall out. Well, some of them, they're press fit in there. So you can take that washer out with the bearings and they're not just going to fall out. Now, if you poke the bearing, yes, it'll pop out, but it'll stay in that washer as long as you don't poke it. It's like they're kind of press fit in there. So just depending on which one you have, they're, they're very easy to take apart and clean and put back together without an issue because the balls don't just flop, fall out. The small one, I did see that the balls came out, but like the my F3R and F95, I can take them apart. And if a ball comes out, it's because I pushed it. I would love to try roller bearings. Um, uh, Real Steel. Real Steel uses some. They use it on the... What they use it on? They used it on the Griffin. They used it on the Titanium Griffin. They also used it on... Didn't they use it on the Metamorph? I think they used it on the Metamorph too. Real Steel does some, some pretty uh, cool shit with their bearings. So they even have some knives that do multi-row bearings. So, um, don't sleep on real steel because they, they got some pretty cool stuff. I've always said my only three fears are sharks, Brock Lesnar and loose bearings. Yeah, it, they, they are scary. <laughs> They're no joke. The first time I took one apart, I didn't know. I did not know. And it was like, because when I took it apart, I was expecting caged bearings, especially from such an expensive knife. And the first one I did that I had that issue was a Shuro, but it was uh, um, it was uh, the Neon, I think. Anyways, point is, is yeah, it was an issue. <laughs> it was an issue. I took it apart. And luckily, I always do it on a mat. So I was kind of lucky. But when they start going, you know, you, you panic mode. You know, because you're just thinking like, how am I ever going to find one of these if something happens? What's funny is when I took apart that, um, the Demco 80 20.5, the part in the video that you guys didn't see was I took it apart and I was trying to record it because I wanted to get it in the video for you guys. The spring goes, Pew! and I heard it hit the wall and my mind was like, it's gone forever. It's gone forever. I heard uh, like relatively where it went but when i got up looking for it i'm just like i'm gonna have to get a hold of demco now I'm, you know <laughs> but i found it pretty quick thank god hey thank you man edc's nuts can i get a double bang for both of these nuts not just one but both of these nuts um what's popping brand new whip just hopped in Hinder Jurassic or new DLT trading spider or spider coat tough. Ooh, I don't know, man. That Jurassic is badass. Uh I don't know. I don't know. I'd uh weigh out the options. Weigh out the options. Yeah, the multi-row bearings I have, they are 21 bearings on each side. So 42 bearings in the damn sure girl. That's crazy. I took apart a custom one time that didn't have it that didn't have the washer. So the bearings were like just like enclosed in there. That was crazy. Um and there was so many of them. It was nuts. Uh the tough was discontinued for a good reason in my humble opinion. Well, there's your answer, bud. There's your answer. Go for the Jurassic 
the price you pay for that damn action yeah but like i said the the shirls that i have they're it's not they're in like a washer so it's different but they also have other ones it just depends depends on the shirl they have you know different uh you know systems i guess the roller bearings are gonna be all fine they're and if you look at their roller bearings they look pretty sweet I've never seen one of those, but I don't doubt it. I don't doubt they're not bad either because, you know, their tolerances are so good. And if you get washers on with good tolerances where everything is lined up perfectly, washer action is amazing. And I, I always say this. When you can get bearings that are so smooth, it feels like Teflon or feels like washers, that's when you got like some really good bearings. And what I mean is where you don't feel the bearings rolling or anything, the, the level of smoothness is frictionless. Well, same thing, vice versa. If you can get washers that feel that so smooth, it feels like it's bearings. I mean, that's the best type of washer, right? Unless if you're looking for that real tight type of action. Which isn't bad. Um, we'll go for about 10 more minutes, guys. How about that? 10 more minutes. Still got 94 people in here. I would be content with the sage. Damn, damn, damn. I just got blood on my micarta. Uh, alcohol. Use some alcohol or, um, yeah, shoot some alcohol. Use some alcohol. You'll be able to get it off. A little scrubbing action, you'll get it off. A little bit of alcohol, some scrubbing action. Otherwise, diet rod. <laughs> um, I put my carta on one of my Yojimbos, made it so glassy. Yeah, sometimes you can get new scales and it just changes the knife for the better. Like it could be a knife that you're you're okay with, but you know, you like it, but it's not like one of your faves. Then you put some new scales on it, and it just brings it up to another level. And I've had that where I change the scales, and the action gets better. Um, that happened on my hinder when I put the titanium scale on there. I mean, the action, with which it already had, it was already on titanium. It's just it was titanium and micarta um, on the outside scale. But when I switched it to just a full titanium scale, I didn't think the action could get better because it was already so good. But with even with other knives that's happened, you can buy roller bearings from this guy on Instagram named uh, Depart13, and he's legit. And you can change out your multi-row on your F95 or F3R, but honestly, I think it's not needed for them. Yeah, I don't think it's needed either. I, um, I love the way the action is already. It's so good. I wouldn't want to change it. I really wouldn't. I love its action. Because it's not that guillotine type of action. It's that hydraulic, like consistent, slow drop. I love it. Love it. Let me grab it. We got the F95 frag. Beautiful, beautiful. And these churros have the best clips churros can have. That thing dropped a little quicker than I thought. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice. Now, this one's more or usually more of the slow controlled action. Very nice. This one's a little faster, though. Nice sound to it, though. Man, I don't know which one I like better. I, I think I like the frag one better just because of the frag. But, man, this one is so comfortable in the hand. You can't beat these ergos. There's no knife I've found yet that have, has better ergos than the F3R. It's just so comfortable. And... The F3R has the best clip out of all titanium milled clips. So good. Now, the one with the frag, they're basically, they're almost the same clip, but it's not as good on the titanium. It's still a good clip. 
Great clip, but not as good. Cue ball has a Savivi coming from REC Saturday. Um, Spartan. Okay, got to go home. See y'all later. See you later, Breeze. I've got half a knee blood. I'll stay here and talk all night if I don't go. Facts. All right, Breeze. Thanks for coming, in, coming through. Love you, cuz. All right, story time. Story time. So... You guys want some story time? What did I write down? I don't think I wrote down wrote one down. Did I write one down? Um. Oh man. Okay. So. All right. Um. So I can tell you guys a story about. Um. All right. I'll tell you guys a story about a time I ran from the cops in a car. All right. Let's go. Let me take a hit. Dang, I haven't bought a knife in a minute. You're slipping. You're slipping. Okay, so. I had somebody in my car. I was driving a, a Jeep um, Cherokee. And um, I'm driving. And the person I have in my passenger seat is uh, I donated my CJRB Tala the other day. Awesome. Three R the frame lock. I like them both. I, like I said, I'd probably take the F nine five if you if you put a gun to my head. But the ergos, man, the F three R just. I I don't think I could find a knife that has better ergos. So it's hard to to pick between the two. I think I'd pick the frag just because it's frag. Uh, because I love frag pattern and it's very comfortable too, but it doesn't compare to the F3Rs or Rose. Um, but they're both equally good. And check this out. This one I can get some uh, scales for. Like I could buy, I can't do anything with this, but anno it, right? Which I love, but I would never anno that. This one I could actually get some fat carbon for, which I'm probably going to do one of these days when I have the money. So anyway, so I'm I'm driving. I'm in. I'm I got a passenger with me. My passenger is uh uh you know one of them's, and um so I already know what time it is. You know what I mean? Like you know, like the type of person I'm riding with. So. Um, I don't have anything on me. I'm I'm clean. I'm all good. But I'm driving and uh, a cop passes me, right? He just passes me. Well, I already know, like, you know, because, like, the person that I'm with, like, the connections and everything else, like, you know, I, I know what I have to do if it gets down to a certain situation. So when we pass him, he passes us and he flips a Yui, right? But it's in a little bit of a distance. Like he either like seen something that he didn't like or something, right? But he flips a bitch and it's flip he's flipping on us. Flips a bitch, he he hits lights. And dude, like um, he's like, go, right? Like, go. Like, and I know that means he's got something so bad on him that we can't get caught, right? So Knowing that, like, I I'm risking now, right, my freedom because to protect his, right? Because it's like um, I'm the one running, so I don't have to run. I don't have to. I can pull over. He can get fucked, right? Um, but the the risk versus, like, like me doing that run, it – it's going to give the person an opportunity because we're talking about vice versa. No comparison, right? No comparison. Say life in prison for passenger or a night in jail for me, right? There's no comparison. So I'm, I'm going to run, right? So I step on it, right? I, I start running and I punch it. And uh, I, I had a head start from the cop because when he flipped the bitch, I punched it then, right? Because dude was like, dude, seeing he's flipping a bitch, right? And he said, go, right? I didn't hesitate. I at home, I punched it. I start flying, 
And I already know where my destination is. I'm not far from it. I'm literally not far from my destination. So I already had a plan, right? My plan is to, to get to my destination and get him out of the car, right? Take the heat, right? That it was my, my plan was like, just take the fall, get him out of the car, take the fall. And, um, you know, and in the situation and the people I'm around, it's, it, it's an honorable thing to do. Right. Um, so I start running and the cop, uh, you know, he's way back there and he's chasing and I get around the corner and I get to my destination, my destination, like I said, it wasn't far. So I get to my destination. I fly and fucking slide, <laughs> slide in hit the brakes, dude's door's already open, right? He's already ready to bounce. So as soon as he bounces, he gets to the, 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 what we can call barn doors, right? Gets to some barn doors and there's the cop, right? I get out too, because I'm going to try, right? I'm going to at least try to, to make an exit. And he pulls up and he's like, stop, you know, like he tells me right there, like he knew, and I was ready. Like I already knew, like I, I you know, I put my hands up and shit. I already knew. And then my uncle comes out, my uncle comes out and I got the luckiest break I've ever had. Well, I don't know about ever, but one of the luckiest breaks ever, the cop knew my uncle, like knew him, knew him. So my uncle just walks up and goes, what's wrong? What's up? You know? And he looks at me and the, you could see the cop's face. He was pissed because he knew right then he wasn't arresting me, you know? And, um, he starts talking shit to me. You know, I was like, I didn't see you. <laughs> I start playing. He's like, you fucking saw me. He's like, um, he said, I floored it. And he's like, and you just kept pulling away from me, you know, because I was already, I had a jump on him. Right. Since I punched it way before he punched it, you know, cause I punched it while he was turning. So obviously when he floors it, I'm going to keep pulling away from him. So he knew I was running and, um, but yeah, he wound up, uh, not doing anything about it, letting me go. It wound up being kind of a laughing thing, but, uh, it was a close one because if it wasn't for my uncle, oh, I would have went to fucking jail for sure. 100%. So I got lucky as hell with that one and, um, dude never got caught and, uh, yeah, so. I decided between Exarch and McKenna and obviously went with the Exarch. I would have said McKenna, but um, I would have said uh, they're both good. They're both good. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. The, the Exarch does have the nice hollow ground blade, which is nice. The McKenna is just so damn snappy. And it's, it is a very, very thin. I didn't forget. I think it's 80 or 90 thousandths thick. And it's like 10 thousandths behind the edge. I thought about getting the Damas the Damascus version of the main wait the Damascus version. The main reason I went McKenna was the 154 CM. Nice. Yeah, the 154 CM is a great steel. I, I like 154 CM. I just don't usually like it with a polished edge. I like it putting a, a nice medium grit edge on there and it gets screaming sharp. Um this one right here, I just did this one recently. Whoo, it's got a nice edge on it. Very nice edge. And you can get like a, with 154 CM, what seems like like a, a 600 grit edge almost looks like an 800 grit edge. Just the way the steel's composition is or something, like it gets almost like a shine to it. Um, Like this is a 600 grit edge. I don't know if you guys will be able to pick it up really good with the camera because fucking live cameras suck but really nice so but um what beast were you driving that pulled on it was a, a a jeep cherokee um but it wasn't that my car or that truck it, i think it had a 5.2 in it but um it's not that that truck would have beat him lined up it's that we, I was going this way. He was going this way. He passed me, right? Then he went to flip a bitch, went to do a U-turn on me. And once he passed me and I seen him pulling like this to turn, I punched it. So I'm already floored by the time he flips a bitch, and, you know, does a U-turn, and then he punches it. So I'm already going 100 miles an hour by the time he's 
picking up to 30, 40 miles an hour. And that's why he said he knew that I, I seen him and was running because I was pulling away from him while he was trying to, to catch up. And it was a straightaway. It was like a hilly straightaway. And all I had to do was make it to a turn that was up ahead. I turned right and I'm like to my destination. It wasn't far from my destination. I have another one. I'll tell you guys about another one real quick. So another one, um, I'm driving, it's nighttime. I got a couple people with me and, um, I'm trying to catch up to my friend, my friend. I, I don't know where we're going. And my friend's driving like a, a dumbass. And I lost him for a second, but I knew if I went on this back street and I punched it, I could meet him at the other side coming out. Anyways, so I get on this back street and I punch it, but I know in order to catch him, I got to pass a couple stop signs. I passed one stop sign and there was a cop there and he comes out and I said, fuck it. And because, uh, I think we were, we were drinking and like, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't drunk. I wasn't drunk at all, but like I had people in the car that were drinking and everything. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to try to get out of here. So I punched it and, um, I ran and I was passing every stop sign. Just, I think there was, there was a few of them anyway. So I, I kept passing stop signs and I made the turn where I thought I was going to be able to catch my buddy up and get on the road. I was originally on. And the cops trying to catch me, but remember I was already hauling ass when he turned out on me, I was already fucking gunning it. So when he pulled out on me, I'm already going. So, and I seen him, I seen him clear as day. And, uh, so I'm now running from him through stop signs and he's chasing me, but I'm, I'm ahead of him. And I turn a left onto a, a whatever road to get to the main road. If I can make it to the main road, I'm scot free. He's not going to catch me. The main road was packed, <laughs> packed. I couldn't do nothing. I got stuck at the main road. And the only way I could get through is if I did some real dumb shit. So I had uh, to put my hands up and stop. And uh, he came up to the car fucking with his gun, pissed, right? Pissed, screaming at me. And I just played it cool. Like, I didn't see him. And he started saying, like, um, you passed seven stop signs and all this shit. And I said, no, no, I only passed one. He got a call right then on his radio for shots fired, right? He runs back to his car, scribbles the ticket, writes 11 stop signs on the ticket, comes back to my window and just throws it in my face, just whips it right in my face. I never seen anything like this before in my life. Like this cop literally went from running up and screaming at me to running away to running right back to me, throwing something right in my face and running away again. Like it was as if, you know, the thing that he got a call on was so important that me running from him didn't mean nothing. And, um, the, the ticket, though, said 11 stop signs, and I didn't pass 11. I, I did pass seven. Well, that's all there was on that block was seven. So when I went to court, I fought it. I fought it, and I proved that there wasn't 11 stop signs. So I pled out to four. I pled out to four stop signs and, you know, passing four stop signs. Not that I was running, though. I, I pled out because, you know, you can plead out and, you know, say I'm guilty for this, you know, and they'll let you, you know, do that sometimes. And I didn't plead out that I ran from him. I pled out that I passed four stop signs, like, you know, just being stupid. And uh, so that's what I got tickets for. So it worked out in my favor, but I could have been fucked. I could have been fucked. Seriously, if he would have, like, if he wouldn't have got that call, he would have dragged me out of that car and all kinds of shit. So I got lucky. I kind of got lucky that there was traffic because if there wasn't and then I would have kept going, whoo, it would have been a real bad chase. <laughs> oh. But, uh, yeah, there you guys go. I love you guys. I thank you guys for watching. It's always fun with these lives. I, I always have a blast with you guys. I appreciate all the donations you guys do. I appreciate all the patron members. I appreciate everybody that sends me stuff to, to review and check out and, 
does deals with me and so much you guys do for this channel. This channel wouldn't exist without you guys. And you guys are amazing, man. Thank you. And I'll see you guys on Saturday. Peace out.